questions that you may be asked is, can I get this rig in and out of my driveway? I'm super high. It's not a motorcycle, baby. It's a chopper. Come on, let's go. How'd that happen? Yeah. How'd that happen? Do, you know what Dusty asked me today? Do we need to be in full leathers for the race? <laughs> if you, hey, if you want to look like fucking Gustenhoff, don't wear leathers. Yeah, go out there with a fucking tank top. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dude, there's all kinds of shit going down with this. It's getting pretty insane. Yeah. So this joker hits me up. Yeah. Who was it? Let me see where it is. Let me get him. I think this is him. Mitch, 8971. Yeah, Mitch sends us the fucking... Quail eggs. Yeah. <laughs> from Ruston, Louisiana. This the, I, don't, I don't know these fucking dudes, right? I, you know, because we've gotten a million fucking damn DMs a day or emails, whatever the case is. So this joker says, hey, you know, on top of everything else, I get this damn message coming that says, hey, mean break race getting intense. I go, ha, yeah, it is. He goes, I got a way to, uh, to up the stakes a little if you want to hear. And I said, tell me, dot, dot, dot. He goes, you ready for this? Yeah. I will put up a hundred bucks cash prize for a head-to-head -head race, Big Scott versus JJ Rides. <laughs> Dude, of course. Of course we're you know taking what my that. Fucking, you know what my fucking response is? Yep, I'm down. Yeah, fucking right. <laughs> we're in. But then I then I was thinking after this conversation. Look, that'll be hold, hold on. Okay. Then he comes back and says, I will send that cash to y'all September 2nd. If y'all down for it, I can make the or I can't make the trip, but I damn sure will help out the stakes. I said, that's what's up. That so that, I just texted JJ, he's good with it. He's I like, see. cool. Can't wait to watch the uh, bits of it. Uh so what so that hundred bucks is going into the pot? No, this is just going to be a race. We we uh, somehow. So I was thinking about today. We, this needs to we be clear. May, we may do the joust for a hundred bucks. <laughs> but who's getting that hundred bucks? Me or JJ? Fuck no! That yeah. needs to be. That needs to go to the freaking pot. No, I will put up a hundred bucks cash prize for a head-to-head -head race. Big Scott versus JJ. Mm, Mitch, <clears throat> go ahead and write us in and clear us up on that. I think that that should go into the pot for Dude, the Dude, the freaking... pot's huge already. What I'm, is it? Listen what to me. It? What is listen it? to me. We, we, <laughs> we figured out the pot already. We were doing the numbers with 60%. This is all the damn um, guys, the bottom three that don't make the first round. Yeah. If they all buy back in. This was like last week yeah. when we were like 10 guys short than that. It The winner was getting $405. <laughs> I'm not talking about the second and third. That was that. They were already covered. The winner was yeah. getting 405 uh, damn dollars cash. Second and third are getting 75 bucks and 50 bucks. That's it. That's all you're getting. First place is taking on some cash. Just tell me how that race is going to become freaking the main event when the fucking guy's racing for like five to seven, eight hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, God. What that's, have we created? That's what I'm saying. This is getting out of control. Is, does it do, do we like lose control of the mini bike fun uh, when no. this thing gets huge and no. there's freaking no listen this is what I want to say who however much money is in there what's up go ahead okay go, keep going however much money is in the is in the fucking pot it doesn't matter don't be a fucking dick that night you know what I mean like anybody yeah. racing like, don't be a fucking dick is all I'm gonna say yeah they're we, go we're gonna have them. You know well, I'm saying? saying I'm saying Rubin's racing. That's good. Intentional but, shit. You're out of here. Yeah, but don't be a fucking dickhead. Yeah, we, all, we don't need to restart freaking the main event. Damn, five six no, times. This is this is uh, this is supposed Fl to be fun. That's it. Flag goes down. I mean, we're all racing to win. <laughs> There's a lot of money on the line. There's a lot of money on the line. That's <laughs> Motherfuckers what I'm gonna be digging. Yeah, but don't don't fucking <laughs> don't wreck me into any dumpster. Yeah, well, there ain't gonna be no dumpsters in the way. The only thing somebody's gonna be able to put you in is a wall again. Mm. But I'm hanging up some freaking damn matting, nice. some fucking uh, martial arts matting on that wall. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. Are you? You know what? You know what? Fucking Ed told me to put over there. What? Dirty mattresses. I thought about that too. I know we're a few dirty. Yeah, ones we're aren't. better than that. Listen okay. to me. We're better than that. We're keeping it classy. Yeah. I mean, hey, we... what's the? Uh, what would it cost? And who do we get in contact with? 
to make our own banners. You know, like the Welcome Race fan, the the flags and shit hanging everywhere. We got them coming from Metric Mike. Yeah, no, he's got some Sonico or whatever it is. Yeah, Welcome coming. Race fans. Yeah, uh, but how do we get them made where they say like whatever we want? ROT and yeah, racing. Yeah, ROT and racing. You can, on get, them. you can do it online. You can do anything online. <laughs> how many feet do we need? A thousand. A thousand foot of ROT and racing flags. Listen to me. I was sleeping the other night. Yeah. And had a dream that we that a tractor trailer pulled in with fucking used tires, and we lined the whole track with tires like a fucking go kart track. Oh, man, How so sick, sick would that be? It would be, it would be. Did you, did you read the post from uh, the cheese? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, so he sends us out last week. So in case you haven't heard, we are eight weeks out into the world's biggest mini bike race and the largest non-professional winner purse in existence. <laughs> this race will have it all, from jumps, terrain changes, to under the lights. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. I you hear listening? You. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking listening. It says, must throw down your state country planet or whatever, meaning you got to bring your own state flag and you got to race for your... Your damn state. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Shit is real and for a good cause. So check them out. The War Run or listen to the updates for anything new. Chopper, racing, or RVing. Fuck. Riders on the norm. Dude, this is fucking... This is turning into bring your state flags north versus south heads up racing. Yeah. it's exactly what's going on. <laughs> this is getting so fucking out of control. I love it. Dude, we got 31 registered r- racers right now. That's what's up. Do the math. Well, I'll tell you what the math is because there's there's that's ten bucks a head right there. So that's three hundred and ten just to start off before any of the contributions that have been thrown into the pot. Yeah, which is a hundred and thirty. A hundred and thirties in? Yeah, a hundred from the cheese from Mini Swapper. Yep. Oh, and did uh what's it fuck, dude. I can't think of your fucking name right now, my bad. And uh he was getting the rental, the rental bike. The the one that we I already hit him to. up. Yeah. You know who it is? Who? Tell me tell me his fucking name, please. Huh? Tell me his James name. Fisher. Is it? Yeah. Is he Burlington, by... North Carolina? James? <laughs> I hope it's the right guy. James? He said that... he talked to you with the um uh, the... Twin Rivers? Yeah. Okay, James, that is you. All right. Okay. Were you fucking wrecked or what? Uh we were day drinking. We were certainly day drinking. Dude, so Twin Rivers, let's talk about Hold that on. for a second. No, we're not done. With, we're not done. With, we will get to that. Because obviously you were there, so you got to fill me in. All right. It looked pretty crazy. <clears throat> so, yeah, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about James here real quick. Let yeah, me, so let James me, is... let, me, let, me, let me verify that it's him. But it is. Anyways. So I did speak to him this weekend. Yeah. And he was saying that he he was going to get the... He wanted the next rental. Right. Uh, and that he would... What was he doing? He He's was paying for the motor. Yeah. So he said, fuck that. I'm going to pay for the fucking motor on he, this thing. Yeah. That's what's up. So he hit me. He sent me the hundred bucks already. Jesus. <laughs> this guy's not fucking around. <laughs> no. He goes, listen. He goes, uh, I'll go get a motor. I'm up here in Burlington, North Carolina. I'll get a motor, and then uh, I'll come down there and help you work on it. Fuck I'm it. like, dude, just send me the freaking money. I'll go down there and get it. Here. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Come on, James. But Come on down, man. Listen to me. He sent me the 100 bucks with a comment. What did it say? Time for hauling ass and taking cash. <laughs> well, I got to go through that. There's a whole bunch of freaking damn shit that these guys are saying. Yeah, I mean, people are talking shit left and right. Look, we say this all the time. This is y'all's show. You know what I mean? If you got something to fucking say, call in. Call. Yeah. We need to figure out how uh, there is some ways. There, there's, there's ways that we can be doing this with like a live feed going, like while we're doing it, like a live chat room feed or a live. Yeah, video we were talking feed. about that. We get, I think it's like Google Hangouts. We can do it with Google Hangouts, and, uh, and then like people could jump on and like, yeah, and and talk shit and talk shit or whatever. Yeah. I think it'd be fun, man. Like a heckle, Fuck like yeah. a, a heckling episode. You're about to hear some heckling. 
Dreamy, Pr- Dreamy Prince is Dreamy Prince uh, about he's to bring quick. some fucking heckling. He's a quick one. He ain't quick on the fucking track, he I'll ain't. tell you that. Well, he's claiming... He might, hey, he might be quick at the mouth. Who's this? Is this there his he is. Oh, he? Jeff Hines. Is he FaceTiming? FaceTime audio told there him. There you go. Nice. Dreamy hey, Prince. Hey, hold on a second. Is this the soon-to-be the 2018 War Run Mini Bike Champ? This is uh, the fucking champion. Sorry, I, I probably don't sound very hot. I have fucking race fever right now. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> my man's got race fever. <laughs> you know it is rough out here. Yeah, I mean I'm just ready. You know, just uh, yeah. boxing, getting in all the hot laps. Um, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out what. What are you at your level where you're at right now? What are you doing to prepare yourself for this freaking race for the biggest mini bike race in the country? What are you doing to prepare yourself mentally and physically? Well, I've been uh, burning myself with an iron pretty regularly. Uh, I just need to no pain so that when I go down, I don't even have to get off the bike. I can throttle through it. <laughs> throttle through on the ground. Yeah, throttle through until I'm back up. Got to get back up somehow. I'm not going to use my legs. <laughs> what what number are you running? What number are you running on the on your bike? Oh, there's actually only one that'll fit, and that's number one. <laughs> this fucking guy. Well, you guys can save on a trophy. I'll just hold my mini bike over my head. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> hey, just run it right up onto the damn uh, podium and just fucking hold it up. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's going to be a bumpy road with everybody I lap on the ground in front of me. Hey, uh, JJ came back. He's a little, um, you know, he, he doesn't. he's not too sure that uh, you're going to be able to uh, outrun him. I told him you had well, something. A, I told him you had something for him. Well, he's, he's a little guy. Yeah, uh, we could. Well, be, you know, we ca- we call him the freaking damn horse jockey because he's so small. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've stood next to him. He's not not real big. I, he does have that. I've got it. You know, he has a competitive edge there. The other thing, you know, I can't help that. I can't shrink. I can't fit into a medium. <laughs> we we don't. Hey, listen to me. We don't fucking sell memes. I tried telling people online already. I told JJ and I told his other buddy up there in fucking Wisconsin. I said, "You want a fucking medium? I'll give you a fucking woman's tank top that'll still fit you loose, just like your fucking riding skills, loose." Yeah, and that's. But that's not winter stuff. Winners only XL. That's a fact. That's it. What uh, what what suit are you bringing? Did, did Scott show me a suit? Did I lose you guys? No, no, you're there. Yeah, you're there. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Somebody's fucking hacking in. The Russians are coming in. Or it's JJ trying to tap in. Oh, that, that's, prob- that's probably accurate, along with everybody else. <laughs> hey, so tell them about this suit, this full white jumpsuit that you're coming in. Fu- full fire suit. <sighs> Well, it's gonna. We're gonna have to get. We're gonna have to get some uh, fireproof suit. That's true. We're gonna need some airbrush flames, arms, ankles. We're gonna definitely need uh, winners ankles. only on the back. My number one. Um, maybe a uh, portrait of the intimidator. I don't know. Are you are you putting the number on your back with the middle finger to show people behind you that you're not coming around me? The middle finger will also be the number one. <laughs> People will know where you're at at all times. I want you to leave the starting line with one hand on the throttle and one hand in the air, meaning number one. Well, well, you're you're number one off a bike and then on a bike and then off the bike again. You know, it's just how it is. It's a lifestyle. Winners only. <laughs> Winners <laughs> only. A lifestyle. Did you throw? Yeah. Did you th- did you throw the idea out about the ten over? Are we not running a ten over for the race, or is it still up in the air? Because you, you if, I remember, listen to me, I remember when you talked to me at the congregation, you told me you're going to build a 10 over because there's no way in this God's green earth that JJ would ever come around you having a 10 over. Yeah, he can get, with his tiny body, he'll be able to go fast at the beginning. I get that. But if he can't get around me, it doesn't matter how fast. So, yeah, I mean, we'll probably have to make something up and mail it out there. <laughs> we can make that happen. I think, I, I think that's the only way, you know? 
Other than that, well, he might zip under it. That's going to be everything. We need to wrap it in barbed wire. <laughs> hey, tell me about the uh, practice spike you got up there in Arizona with the with the uh, heavy K bar on the bag, or the oh, bayonet. Yeah. Uh, is well, that a bayonet well, or is that a K bar? I don't know, dude. I'm. I, you guys are the military guys, not me. <laughs> I need. I need a photo. Uh I gotta show. I gotta show this to uh, Wesley. That is def- That is definitely a fucking uh, bayonet. A bayonet. <laughs> Fix bayonet. Got it. Go ahead. All right, we're on it. So basically, yeah, we welded it on there. Uh, my buddy bent it already. He went three o'clock doing a wheelie. <laughs> Checking uh, the time. He went three o'clock doing. The wheelie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wrong time for wheelies. That's and, right. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's still good. I mean, if if any if any locals give me any guff, I can pull it out and joust them with that. <laughs> Winners uh, only. You know, and I'll just you know I'll make kebabs. That's it. Loser kebabs. That's it. So, uh, what's making you come all the way from across the states to come to an event like this fr- from Arizona? It's the biggest mini bike race in the nation. Ever. I mean, there's, there's really not a question, is it not? There's not. No, there's nothing else. It's the the question is why isn't everybody? That's what I want to know. Well, yeah, we're eight weeks out, and I have a feeling right now we're eleven <laughs> we're eleven states deep right now. We got people coming from eleven states. It'll be twenty states and seventy five sponsors. Hey, our, <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> Hey, are you? You're gonna tell me, kill me. Listen to me. When I see you get off the when I see you get off the plane, I want you to be wearing. I want you to be wearing your state flag and suit. Yeah, done. Race done. suit. I got it. Done. Are you yeah, flying into already, Wilmington? No, I'm flying into Jacksonville. Into fucking Ellis. Wrong. It's the wrong city. God. Well, why are you flying in? A, is that the flight that you got? Oh, you you're not. I see what you're doing. This is a this is a secret operative coming in. Coming oh, into a you, you you know there's he doesn't a, there's, want to be seen. Yeah, there's a high security threat coming into Wilmington. I got you. I understand now. I can't have anybody catching wind of my shit before I'm there. <laughs> what are you shipping your bike out to us? No, I'm renting one. Oh, you've got what? You've got a He's rental. Got, yeah, we were talking about how sick would it be if he got off his if he got off his plane in Jacksonville and he was waiting there to freaking baggage claim and a goddamn mini bike came freaking damn barreling around the freaking <laughs> ter- the damn belt. <laughs> Just laid up, and everybody's looking around, going, "Who the fuck has a mini bike?" Who who that brought dude. a mini bike with him from Arizona? And people are looking around and they just see this one dude standing there in a full on, full white fire suit with his helmet on, and they're Fireworks looking at in the background. That's right, and, the, <laughs> and they're looking at you, and you point at yourself, going, "Yeah, that's me." Yeah, that, <laughs> take yeah, it off the belt and ride right off. Just ride it, ride it right out of the fucking airport. Yep. I don't need a taxi. This is my fucking ride. Oh God! Cancel the Uber, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no time no time for Ubers I got my own fucking transportation pop it out of that suitcase done <laughs> holy fuck okay so here we are hey listen to me here we are eight weeks out before the big race what are you doing um, what are you feeding the, the body in order to prep yourself for uh, being ready for this race uh, a lot of beer a yeah. lot of beer uh Heavy smoking, so I can get used to all the exhaust. You know, there's going to be a lot of fumes in the air. I don't want to get, you know, feeling weird from it. So I've just been smoking a couple packs a day. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Hey, someone told me that JJ is vegan. That's why he's got such a slender build. <laughs> Shit, I might, I might have to try that out. <laughs> That's just that's just racing tips. Those are just racing tips. Yeah, right, you're, you're, there it is. Done. That's it. Anything save to get the, anything to gain a little bit more speed. Yeah, it, save the stakes for the podium. That's <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. All right, so I'm, I'm we're getting ready to get, get you out of here. I'm, I'm going to have you back on probably a week before the freaking big race. Okay. Just for final preparations, knowing you're just hours away from being on that fucking podium in the number one position, holding the freaking trophy, and I'm just going to rain fucking all the bills. I'm, I'm going to take the bucket that's full of money, and I'm just going to pour it on top of your head. 
That's good because that's good because I'm not going to need it. Everyone else behind me is going to need it for their hospital bills after rolling over them. <laughs> EMS EMS will be will be on high alert that night. I'm telling you. Oh, they'll be they'll be getting tipped heavy. <laughs> Tip heavy. <laughs> oh fuck! Is there anything you want to you want to send out prior to you uh, getting off the line here, real quick? Nope. Just uh, see you, dickheads, later. Uh, middle. You can't see middle fingers, so middle finger and winners only. Talk to you later. <laughs> That's it. All right, man. We'll later. see you later. <laughs> He just hung up. Just left. <laughs> that, that, that dude's going to kill it when he gets here. Oh he God. will come in a fire suit. He will come. He says he's going He says he's going to flea market, and there's people over there that airbrush, and he's going to do it. <laughs> he, said, he said arms and ankles. He said do it all the bottom. Not his legs. Just ankles, arms and ankles. Ankles only. Fuck. That dude. Uh, All right. It's too late in the game. You know where we're at right now. What Chevy doing? Is he headed up to uh, Vanders? Yeah, so we got to talk about that too. Let's do it. The event. I, honestly, I don't know too much about it, but I'll uh, I'll go in here and look at it. Yeah, well, so Vander's girl is yes. uh, is sick, like, right? right? Right, exactly, and he's doing a benefit this Saturday. Yeah. Uh, right here, let the good times roll. Right, that's it. Yeah, I think that's a banner for it right there. I believe so. Yeah, Brooklyn, New York, benefit firm is for uh, Lauren Canelli. That's how you say your name, August twenty sixth. Yeah, so if you're up in uh, if you're up in the Brooklyn area, go check that out. Yeah, hit up Vander. Yeah, Vander's so fucking cool. Yeah, so he po- posts on here um, a few days back. Says attention block party this Saturday, August twenty sixth is where to be. Come support a great cause. Please help spread the word. Make uh, an event. Uh, make a great cause. Please uh, help spread the word and make an event. To invite people to your Facebook and add uh, many friends so you can come um, make new friends and have a blast. You know what I'm saying? Nice, that's what's up. Yeah. Hey, this is Chevy D Wolf. I'm here with Vander. What's going on, bud? What are we doing out here in Brooklyn? Well, we're going to wage war against my beautiful girlfriend, Lauren, uh, who has been diagnosed with cancer. We're not going to wage against her. We're going to rage against cancer. We're going to fucking get rid of it, and we're going to fucking support her in these difficult times that we're having. Cancer's going down. Everybody everybody knows somebody. Yeah. Everybody has it. Everybody knows somebody. It's insane. This Saturday, August 26th, right? We're going to do, we're going to have, what, barbecue, burgers, hot dogs? Barbecue, burgers, hot dogs, all different sorts of beer. I think there's like 2,000 beers. We probably have to get more. We got a shit ton of good raffle stuff too, don't we? We got, dude, everybody gave parts that I don't want to give up. So you're going to have to come here and and get and get get them from me because if there's anything left over, sorry. There's some ma- amazing parts, man. We got, we got. A, I got, I got a bicycle. A cast magneto. I got a cast magneto from Morris Mag. I got a bicycle from a guy, Paul, I believe his name is. We got some throwback rocker boxes for a shovel head. I got a 1974 Aramaki Harley Davidson SX 175 that's going to be running. It's a winter project, and I got a roller, a 60s iron head roller ready. Just put a motor in it and flat track your life away. Yeah, flat track or die. Or flat track or die, whatever you want to <laughs> whatever you want to do. Chop it, flat yeah. track it, cafe racer, I don't give a We're shit. We're having a car show, so bring your cars. There's going to be Unimogs here. Hopefully we get something for the Unimog to roll over is what I'm kind of we're, try, we're trying to get a we're trying to get a fucking wrecked car to have yeah. my friend drive his Unimog over a wrecked car. Black block party slash monster truck rally. Skateboarding, I I built a couple obstacles for my friends that skateboard to have a best trick and have fun with it. Dude, we got all kinds of stuff. We got a shit ton of t-shirts. 
We got some prints from Godspeed. We got a man. We got a bunch of stuff coming on, don't we? We have riding handker leather riding handkerchiefs from Paul Cox. What? Who has that? Yeah. You don't have that. Nope. Not yet. Unless you come here and get it. That's what I'm saying. We're doing 50-50, right? We're doing we're a 50-50 We're doing drawing? a 50-50. We're doing raffles. Five for a raffle, 10 for three, 20 for six, and then we're doing $25 raffles for the Mars Mag, the motorcycle, painted gas tanks, tradition cycles. Yeah. Luke the Swede Unc painted a tank? Luke the Swede, Uncle Kevin, Shade Tree. What? So basically, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I've been to a lot of events, and there's uh, not too many that I've seen with a this much good shit. Oh, I know. Trevor Wade, stainless yeah. handlebars. I got V Manufacturing sending handlebars. Nick from Industry Custom Customs sending a bunch of swag. Uh, Truth. We basically uh, from Chop got Ahead sending DVDs, a shit ton of swag. Mike from Chop Machine. Everything you could possibly want in the chopper motorcycle world. I got girls sending jewelry. I got jewelry sitting here. I got fucking whatever you want. Girls got shit. I got kids chopper sweatshirts. We got everything, I feel like. A BMX bike. I think I already said that. It's covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all make it out here, man. We got a, it's a good cause. It's great people, man. And there's a special guest that's going to blow your guys' minds. Yeah. You've seen him on movies? You've seen, you might have seen, you might have seen him on the big screen. You might have seen him on Every Which Way But Loose or Every Which Way You Can. Yeah. And it's not a human being. That's all I'm going to say. Co star. That's all I got to say. All right, y'all. Hey, man, come out here and support us. Let the good times roll, man. It's for a good cause. It's for Lauren. Vander's a great dude. Y'all come, y'all come send it with us. Hey, uh, there was something else that uh, I felt like I was supposed to talk about. Colby. What did Colby send the other day? Yes, in our, in in our messages. Uh, I think that's a new shop opening up in Nashville. Oh, really? Yeah, it's one of his boys, which uh, hopefully we can help out. Yeah. Mention no, it. Yeah. Trying to get out there, trying to see it. Mm. January 1st. Colby Landis, here we go. What's that say? The Gusher, Gusher yep. Cycles? Gusher Cycles. With a big old chick with her tit hanging out. What? Yeah, look Let's at this. Bam! Damn! Smokey? Yeah. She got a up. chopper coming out of her vagina? That's cool. Well, it's gushing. Yeah, it's gushing out. Yeah. Oh, oh. Ah, well, now we got it. Gusher <laughs> Cycles. I got it. Here we go. I got Grand it. opening. Party and bike show. September 23rd. Music, fun, drink, raffles. Fun again. Gusher nice. Cycles. Hit them up. Where are that? Um. fuck is this? Let me see where there's a damn... You uh, got an address on there? I don't know if there is an address. GusherCycles.com. Check them out. Oh, I guess it says uh, 2515 Dickerson Pike. Is that an address? I guess so. Yeah. Nashville? Yeah, so I'll read a little bit. Gusher Cycles, hoping to see everybody who can make it out to the grand opening party bike show. Currently looking for some sponsors, anybody who might be willing to donate swag or party to the cause of raffle. Raffle off. If interested, please give me a shout. Gusher Cycles Grand Opening Party is a uh, bike show and will be held in the compound at Gusher Cycles. The compound? Come on! It's only one compound, son. <laughs> we hit him up. We will have an infamous health, our Heath Haynes, spinning the rock and roll records, food catered by Pig and Pie, mm. beer supplied by the Cobra Bar, who have lots of good stuff for the raffle, including a Biltwell Gringo helmet. That's what's up. Um, a set of uh, Gusher Cycles handlebars, T-shirts, stickers, etc. So looking for uh, to add sponsors. Three trophies will be given uh, away to the bike show. Uh, the categories are simple, best custom, best classic, most hated. Damn. No rules or makes or models. All bikes are judged. Will be third party, not affiliated with the Gusher Cycles. Some Gusher Cycles bikes will be displayed, but are not be eligible for trophies. Keep in mind that the benefit help keep the shop alive. As we can uh, describe the rocky uh, start. Damn. Described as a rocky start. They must have had a hard hard start, whatever the case is. We need to, we need to talk to these guys and yeah. see what's up. Admission is free. $10 to enter the bike show. Raffle tickets are $2 a piece. 
hey, two for one, three for five. Damn, that's what's up. That's what you need to do it. Yep. So that's what's up. Gusher Cycles. Hit them up. They got a uh, Instagram. Is it? Was there an Instagram on there? What is it? Just GusherCycles.com? GusherCycles.com. I'm sure you can find all your info there. Yeah. There you go, Colby. Bam. Shout out. Uh, James buying the motor. Back on James. Yeah. So James Fisher. Yeah. So I talked to him. We were out in the. We were in the river. Oh, you were floating in the river while you were talking. No, to him? we were on. Uh, we were on uh, Dude Island. I think. Uh, I don't know if this was Dude Island or the head Dude Island at the uh, Smoky Mountain Chopper Fest, but Shoprag was calling it Dude Island. Okay. So I'm going with Dude Island. There's a bunch of dudes on it. Yeah. It's <laughs> just like a fucking rock in the middle yeah. of the river, and a bunch of dudes hanging onto that rock. Right. So yeah, so James comes out and was talking to me and said he was going to buy that fucking motor. And he goes, that's why I told him, I was like, dude, you need to fucking, you need to hit up Scott. Don't tell me this shit right now. Yeah, too we've, fucked up. We've been drinking all I'm on, day. I'm on Dude Island. I'm on Dude Island out here. There he is. Nice. Space Take timing. It. Take it. Marcus. What is happening? What's up, brother? Oh, sorry. I just had a customer stop by. Oh, that's cool, dude. It's all about business, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Nice. The bikes are looking good, man. Thanks. So that's the shop or what? Oh, yeah. So here's, uh, oh, I guess I'll start in the back. <laughs> See what you got. The, uh, I built all these shelves for storage. Nice. I'll start in the back of the room. Where's this at located? Uh, where's this at exactly? Like right down the street from where Fuel Cleveland was. Oh, nice. So this is a customer bike that's pretty ugly. Uh, Triumph project I got for my wife. Nice. Got a 70 XLCH that I've been slowly putting back to stock. Pretty yeah. neat little bike. Oh, yeah. That cool, ugly white seat I got at Wasi on. I'm all oh, stoked on it. Sick. Uh, this is a bike I did last year. Oh, yeah. 78. That's the Nashville nightmare. Thing's been a thorn in my side. Has it? Oh no! Just a little dumb stuff, pain in the ass. Oh yeah. You know, you buy something and it's just blown up. Right. There's the beast. Yes, yeah, the eighty eighty I did this year. Yep. Uh, tools, buffer, basic stuff, tire machine, parts. That's it. Here's the Motor I got that I just kind of had a bunch of pieces, and I'm like, oh, I might as well try and put that together. Nice. I need those so I heads. Pretty, pretty much a whole whole motor there. I need a – I got a bill of sale with it, so it's real hard in Ohio to get titles for stuff. Now, do you guys have um, – you guys do titles for motors up there in Cleveland or what? Uh, I don't understand the question. Do you guys uh, – so you're saying you got a title with that motor? No, I got a bill of sale. Bill of sale, it. got it. So I have to go, basically, Ohio like doesn't recognize that. So unless it's, um, the they go by the out of st the selling states laws, but it's I just got the cases like in a trade of parts. So oh, I got you. I got to try to do that Vermont title thing, which I've talked to people and apparently works. You basically send the bill, bill of sale and a pencil rubbing of the VIN number and um, they'll issue issue you a title. And then you basically just have to transfer it from state to state that way. Oh, really? So that so you're saying that the motor's titled. Is that, no, 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 am no, I no. hearing that right? No. I'm all fucked up. You're all fucked up. Smoking, so, I'd say I'm smoking too much weed, but I ain't smoking no weed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I am, but I'm following. The uh, uh it's all he's just got a bill of sale with the motor. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, there's no title with nice, it. Nice, okay. Yeah, I got basically I have to apply for a title. Yeah, for gotcha, okay. Yeah, the reason, um, reason why I'm telling you, I went down that road here in North Carolina. I went and uh built my last shovel head and then went down to get it you got to get it inspected here so basically an inspection all they do is they do a safety inspection and then they basically run the numbers on the motor they run the numbers on the transmission they run the numbers on your frame well they ran the numbers on my frame then they went to go run the numbers on my motor and then the dude hung up his phone and then turned to me and goes where'd you get the motor at and i go it came with the frame why he goes oh your motor's stolen so needless to say we got to impound your whole freaking bike the whole thing yeah 
So I went through that what, for about, I went through that for about five months, but <laughs> what a nightmare. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. But anyway. Hey, totally off topic, but I have that same map poster. Oh, oh no nice. shit. That's on your wall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah this good. is a, this is a studio, just so you know. There's Wes. What's up, man? Yeah, that's the uh head uh the helmet uh rack from those once loyal. Do you see those heavy gauge uh steel freaking uh wrenches that he bends up? Oh, gotcha, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we got a bunch nice. of dude. Some people send us some cool shit, yep. so we try to throw it on the wall. Yep. Cool. Very oh, cool. Yep. Some artwork from uh, Anthony Hicks. Yep. He's got some badass artwork. He had some up there at Fuel Cleveland. Yeah, I saw it. Yep. Yep. Nice. What well, did Marcus? What else? Uh, Triumph Motor, Evo Motor, Evo Motor, gaskets. Real quick. Real quick. Real yep. quick. Into the other room. This is where most of the work happens. That's mostly storage back there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Home, parts washer, wheel stand, blast cabinet, tools, 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 bunch of parts, 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 and panhead. Oh, nice. Fun stuff, right? Woo -hoo. Is that a and, customer? Is that a customer's or yours? Uh, this is gonna be for my dad, actually. Oh no shit! Nice. So that that'll be fun. And Pops is getting hooked up. Yeah, he is. That's where all the motor shit happens over there. Cool deal. So do you uh do you do everything in house or what or try to? Yeah, I do. I do everything myself here. I just don't do. I'm not really a fabricator. I mean, it seems right. like everybody else is. So, yeah. Um, I don't really do fancy fabrication stuff. So okay. I I can do enough to to get done what I need done. Right. And uh, other than that, I mean, I send my paint out and chrome and polishing and you know seats upholstery. Right. Other than that, I do everything. I'll build the wheels, lace the wheels, build the motor from the crank pin out. I mean, nice. I do it all, how, which how, sometimes is a little exhausting, but you know. Yeah, I'm sure. That's just the way I was taught. You should, you gotta know how to do everything. What? Uh, how? How did you get into that? Where? Where? Where did all this start at? Uh, well, so my dad. You know, I was had a bike pretty much my whole life, and my one uncle, they all always had shovel heads. So I did like the poker runs and all that shit when I was a little kid, and that was fun. But Harleys were never anything that I ever dreamed I could afford, you know? Yeah. So I never really thought about it until I think I was t maybe 27. I moved back from Oakland, and I kind of started to, like, settle down a little bit. Right. <laughs> right. So I was like, man, I really want to get a bike, and... Um, found this Sportster for sale down the street from where I lived and ended up buying it. And the first time I, I and I had ridden, I had like a Yamaha, you know, that a friend gave me and was like, mm -hmm. here, learn how to ride a motorcycle. Yeah. And I was like, all right, this is fun. So that kind of, you know, kind of got me going. And then, so I bought this bike and two of my other skateboard buddies that I work with said, Hey, do you have a computer? And I was like, no, but my parents do. Mind <laughs> you, this is, you know, how, what, at nine, ten years ago? Right. Yeah. And and uh, they're like, you know, Max, the skateboard guy? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And uh, they're like, well, he has this thing called 4Q conditioning. It's a blog spot. I'm like, what the fuck is a blog spot? <laughs> and they're like, just, he, dude, like, wrote it down on a napkin at the bar. And he's like, go home or wherever. Go to a computer and type this in the computer. And it'll be cool. And I was like, okay. So I did that. And then, of course, just like, you know, spent all afternoon staring at the old pictures. And then, yeah. you know, I had, uh, let's see. I can't remember if I had got the bike at that point or it was around the same time. So I buy this uh, 75 Ironhead Sportster, like swing arm, just not totally stock, but, you know, kind of basic setup. And, mm -hmm. Now I look at it and I was like, man, that thing was fucking ugly. But <laughs> at the time, I didn't know anything. You know, I didn't know anybody else that had rode motorcycles, you know, my age. Yeah. So I bought it and I just was like running around town having a blast. And I was hooked instantly. It was like the first time I skateboarded, I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. And the first time when I went to test ride that bike to buy it, I had just gone around the block. And as the first time I ever rode a Harley, like as the rider, the driver. Right. And I, it was like instantly, I'm like, yep, this is what I'm doing from now on. Huh. And, <laughs> like uh, that. yeah, yeah, I was hooked. So 
friend of mine had a sport bike and we go down the shore way and he's like, yeah, fucking open. I didn't have a speedometer. He's like, open it up and I'll just pace you and I'll tell you how fast you're going. <laughs> so, uh, blew the head gasket doing that. Damn Set it, it wide open. Yeah. He told me it was 105. I think yeah. that might be a little far fetched <laughs> for an iron head sportster, but needless to say, we were moving pretty good. God. And, uh, it just like, shut off and oil was pouring everywhere and i'm like i don't know what happened like i had no idea how the thing worked <laughs> and uh i got it to start again and i just kind of rode it like that for the rest of the season holy Damn shit it. and uh i just i didn't have a fucking clue and so i tore it apart i'm like oh obviously this thing's fucked up i need to tear it apart and uh i wanted to build a chopper you know i was right. like i need a rigid frame and z bars like no matter what <laughs> yeah you know you get like your laundry list oh yeah and uh so i did that and i was like well i guess i better start figuring this out and had like an old timer family friend that was retired and let me bring everything over to his garage and started kind of showing me the way oh, and that's, uh, that's always nice yeah, so that was really cool, and and he's become like a close friend of mine over the years. And, right. Um, but you know he moved pretty slow, and and uh, you know he didn't have any problem with it. But I was like, hey, you know, I'm trying to get this thing done at a little bit better pace. So <laughs> trying to ride this thing. <laughs> right, right. And um, so there was a local motorcycle shop here in Cleveland called Cleveland Motorcycle. And it was pretty much the only shop that I ever knew of. And ironically, when I was a teenager, directly next door to that was like the DIY venue where bands played like every weekend. Right. right. So I knew of the place and we were just like, hey, don't fuck with that guy or, you know, you're going to lose that battle. And then years later, here I am going in there like, hey, uh, I want to learn about motorcycles. <laughs> and... Um, so I kind of had a foot in the door there and I just started being the grunt and I still didn't really know much. Uh, but I learned a lot there. I learned a shitload there. Oh, sure. And, uh, it, but then it kind of became the same thing. It was like, Hey, I'll come be your grunt and exchange for my motor getting built, my <laughs> bike getting put back together. That's right. So like eight months later, nothing had been touched on my motor. And Damn I was like, it. all right, well, I got, I had enough of this. And in that time I had met Jesse, uh, who does the gas box. Um, and he, so he grew up in that shop okay. and at the same time I walked in the door, he had just walked out the door hmm. and we didn't know each other. I didn't know who he was, but it just happened that way. Well, then I start seeing him around at like a lot of the same places I'm going and we start talking and long story short, I box all my shit up once again and take it to his shop where it actually gets done. Nice. So then I started being his shop helper and, you know, I learned even more from him and, uh, I don't know. In that time, I had found out about MMI, the school out in Phoenix. Uh, there's one in Orlando, too. Right. So I had heard about this school, and I was like, great, that's my ticket out of Cleveland. Uh, not to jump around too much, but when I moved back from Oakland, I was like, I'm not staying. Like, this is temporary. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, three three years later, I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. Wait, hang on a second. Where are you at? In, where are you at in Cleveland? Are you in like downtown Cleveland? Is that where you live? Uh, where I live is like the, on the west side. I guess the suburbs on the west side. Nobody lives in downtown Cleveland. Yeah, uh, the, just... the I I spend a lot of time up in North Olmsted. <laughs> yeah. That's, okay. So North Olmsted's a little bit further out. I'm like the immediate like okay. neighboring suburb. But... I got gotcha. you. That's where the second location of the gas box was, was in North Olmsted. Okay, yeah, no shit. That was like, that would have been between like 01 and 05 when I was hanging out up there. Okay, yeah, back, yeah, back then, yeah. I, was li I was actually living in the, on 98th and Lorraine in Cleveland, which is not a sweet place to live, but <laughs> when you're a kid, you know, yeah. you're like, I can do whatever I want. Yeah, of course. And around that time, yeah, that was fun. I wouldn't do it again, but I had a blast at the time. Right, right. Huh. But anyways, um, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of getting lost. But anyhow, I guess I go out to Phoenix, and 
I went out there by myself, just me and my dog, and my dad drove out with me. We just loaded up the truck and drove across the country, and um, I went by myself, which was what I needed to do because everything else surrounding whatever my free time, I wasn't, you know, treating myself well or healthy. It was just drinking too much and just generally not caring about anything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, saw a lot of people fall away along the way. And, you know, when I got into bikes, it gave me something to like actually focus my energy on instead right. of just trying to, instead of trying to break everything, I was yeah. like, oh, I can build something. Right. And that's really kind of what got me. That's what got the hooks in on me. Nice. So go out to Phoenix and start the school. And, you know, I got mixed feelings about the school, but. Ultimately, I think it was a great experience and it's a great facility. I just I think the way the school is run uh, is pretty shitty because they're just cranking kids through to, to get paid. Basically, it's all, it's all about no, numbers. They, right. Yeah. If the kids fail, they don't get their money. Right. So they're just pushing people through. But like anything else, man, you, you get out what you put in. Right. Exactly. If you want to be there, there it was the a, amazing facility. Right. But, you know, there's just a lot of goofballs that. Or, you know, a lot and a lot of guys on the GI Bill, which some of them were totally into it, but a lot mm. of guys are just getting paid to be there. So they oh, don't yeah. give a fuck. Oh, yeah. yeah. We had a few guys we had a few guys that went down to Orlando's um school down there. Yeah. It, the AMI or MMI Orlando? Uh MMI. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's dude, I think that it it's probably the same as my uh as my welding program was. There's like dudes in there. If you want to learn how to weld, like in the program that I was at, all you had to do was pay attention and 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 actually want to be there. Or you, there's people that just fucking are just there to get a, a damn tuition check. Yeah, right. So I mean, it, it is what it is. But yeah. I only say that because a lot of those people were in the way. However, yeah, and, and a lot of people would talk shit about the school, but it's like, well, you're not trying. Yeah, you know. So I had a good experience, but I had a special experience because I happened to meet Jeremiah of Love Cycles um, really totally on accident. And um, he had just moved out of his garage into his first shop. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I basically just kind of told him what I was same thing. I just told you what I had been doing, what I was about and, and asked him if he needed any help. And he was like, well, you know, I couldn't pay you anything, but I can teach you. <laughs> That's right. And I was like, I'm here going to school. I don't care. Like, yeah. I, I was there at nine o'clock the next morning. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, so I was persistent and, and uh, just it, it turned out to be a, an incredible experience. And now, you know, we're like family. So I couldn't I couldn't ask for a better experience. How did you how did you run into him? Was he just in? He was just getting into his new shop and you walked in or what? Uh, okay. So the, my first instructor in the school was like, Hey, have you guys heard of dice magazine? And I was, I had, I'm like, yeah, yeah I heard of that. I've, I've never got my hands on one, but I've heard of it. And he said, you know, there's this, uh, vintage like uh, resale store down in downtown Phoenix and they sell that magazine and pomade. So we're brand new to motorcycle school. We all think we're going to be cool and slick our hair back. <laughs> right. So, which is totally dumb now, but at the time I was like, yeah, we're cool. We need pomade. <laughs> yeah, pomade and Dice Magazine. That's right. <laughs> we're there. Freaking bikers. Oh, yeah, for sure. Dude, that's awesome. And uh, so we go down there and the girl, you know, working the counter says, hey, you guys heard of Love Cycles? And I was like, well, I have. I, You know, I'd seen his bikes on, on the internet. And um, the pink pan head that Zach has, actually, that was the, the bike that I saw. Nice. Okay, yeah. And and um i go oh no shit he's like next door i had no idea and she's like yeah i just opened a shop why don't you guys go over there and just check it out i was like okay cool so we go in there and i needed a part for my sports sir so he said he could order it for me and uh kind of funny story i had set my keys down on the counter and uh, just a bad habit i had so i had i went to leave and i was like oh i don't have my keys i must have set them on the counter and i go back in there and they're gone (laughs) <laughs> and they're like nowhere to be found and the only other person that had entered you know the store was some tweaker guy off the bus uh. and i was like that motherfucker must have swiped him 
So uh, I called a friend and was like, hey, can you go to my house and get my spare keys and then drive them down to me? Which is a huge favor to ask of somebody, especially someone you barely know. Right. Um, but they did it and that was solid. Um, so that's I, how I got. I basically was trapped sitting there talking to him for like 45 minutes. But had that not happened, I probably Just would have never, out. you know, I'd probably never would have asked him if i could work for him or you know that's right i just kind of got stuck in that situation where we were sitting there talking to each other because we had to and forced to talk to jeremiah that's crazy from love yeah right well he had to talk to me basically yeah there you go (laughs) yeah (laughs) dude's like fuck i'm just trying to get some work done shit yeah exactly i don't care about your sports or parts (laughs) but uh no i mean i guess everything happens for a reason but that it worked out that way and uh i'm glad it did so i basically i would go to school in the morning and then drive downtown to his shop and work with him all the rest of the day and night and that's all i did nice and and it was great you know i i just i I, he introduced me to so many people because he i mean obviously knew everybody right and Phoenix being that close to California, like the first Love Cycles party, the one year party was just such an unreal experience. Just so much fun, so many cool bikes. And, and mind you, this was all brand new to me. And at that time, this is around 2010, it was still pretty new to most people our age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it hadn't, hadn't really exploded right, yet. Right. So. To well, yeah, see the, the, all that and be around all that and be like, hey, Marcus, this is so-and-so. Like, just to meet everybody casually, it's, yeah. you know, I was, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have had that same experience any other way, you know? Right. Well, they were, I mean, if you think about it back then, like, and not, I mean, the, a lot of those dudes were like, like all the dudes that had the big blogs and shit, like they were celebrities in our world. Yeah. Oh, totally. Right. So it was basically like Max Jeremiah and Mike Davis. That's the only people yeah. I knew of because <laughs> yeah. they, you know. Yeah, they were. And then to meet all those people and like to meet Ryan and just all all those California guys and they all had real bikes and I had an Ironhead Sportster and I was like, man, one fucking day I'm gonna have me a real bike. You yeah. Know? Now look so was, yeah, now I got <laughs> three that. <laughs> That's right. So how know? did so how did this whole terminal speed start? Uh. So, so I came back from school, I worked at the dealership, I worked for Jesse, then I left the dealership and worked for Jesse full time. And, uh, you know, things kind of slowed off there and I got a part-time job elsewhere, which became a full-time job. And then Jesse basically didn't want to do service anymore. So I had to get all my shit out of there. And so, you know, I had bought tools and all kinds of stuff and I needed somewhere to put it. And, you know, my garage wasn't cutting it. So I had, you know, my couple buddies that originally got me into bikes to begin with uh-huh. had had this shop, you know, like they had had it for maybe five or six years. And they just kind of kept their bikes. You know, like they didn't have garages. So they kept their bikes down here and just kind of fixed whatever they needed to. And right. then this back room over here was a ramp wall to wall half pipe. Oh, damn. Nice. He had like, got rid of like, it. <laughs> this doorway here, you would have like was the back of a ramp and you had to crawl up this little ladder and then you're up on the deck and then it was literally wall to wall. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's just kind of like their hangout spot. Right. Little party spot. And I was like, a couple guys were leaving and I'm like, Hey man, I need a, like, I need somewhere to put my tools and shit. And, uh, so I moved in here and it was like, none of the lights worked, you know, it was just like really crappy, but it was just their hangout spot. You know, I didn't care. So I'm like, uh, you know, I'm really trying to do some work in here. I'm going to start fixing stuff up and, you know, I'm going to spread my arms a little bit. And I just want you guys to know, like, I want, I want to turn this into a motorcycle shop. So if that's going to be a problem, tell me, and that's cool, but I I don't want to be a surprise to you. So I'm just telling you like what I got on my mind. Yeah. And that was two years ago and now it's all mine. Nice. So, what did did they just bail out and, and go find another spot? Like once you yeah. Oh uh, well, basically they like started buying houses. Like yeah. one guy bought a house. He's like, oh, now I got a garage. So yeah. I right. The place and another guy moved and um, 
yeah so there i mean we're all still buddies it's yeah not anything like yeah we're all cool and they're all you know and if they need anything yeah come down you can use the tools whatever of course um so maybe about a year ago i was thinking to myself i might shit or get off the pot and try and make a real go at this thing and, right uh you know I'm, I'm down here all the time working i might as well so i just kind of came up with the the shop the name basically like the our original one building downtown was called the terminal tower okay so there's like a lot of terminal references regarding cleveland stuff cleveland bands and all that and, uh-huh you know, I didn't want to be like such and such as choppers because I just think that's generic for me. But uh-huh. so I like to go fast. Terminal speed it was. It's a fucking cool name. Yeah. It's a cool logo, too. <laughs> yeah, I had uh, Ryan Ford drew that. I got to uh-huh. give him his props. Nice. He's uh was a friend of a friend and did these cool. He's a really good graphic artist. Right. And I was kind of looking through his stuff on his Instagram after I met him. And he had this like little thumbnail sketch that was barely anything that was kind of the raw version of that. And I hit him up and was like, Hey, well, you know, what is that? And he's like, Oh, nothing really. I'm like, well, how about, how about you make yeah. something? That's right. And he nailed it. So good. I love it. Yeah. It's it awesome. I just wrote down his name. Cause that we need, yeah. uh, we need a new logo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Ryan for Ryan Troy Ford, I think is his Instagram. Nice. Super nice kid, extremely talented artist. I'm incredibly grateful that he drew me an awesome logo. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I do um, kind of do a little bit of everything. Seems like mostly shovel heads and iron head sportsers, which uh, I guess someone's got to do it, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, how gotta... do you get into the iron head sport? Well, I mean, I guess, you, I guess somebody does need to get into the iron yeah. head sports. Oh, game. yeah there's enough of them out there and they'll take all the work you can throw at them holy crap it's just uh you know how much money are you willing to sink into it that's right yeah i built i rebuilt two complete motors like in the last month or two months and i told the guys both i'm like this is how much it costs and this is what your bike's worth and they're like i don't care i'm like okay yeah some i mean some of them love it you know what i mean like it was their dads or they something needed, crazy yeah. they got to keep that right bike. right well the one kid actually had a real nice bike and someone totally screwed him over on rebuilding the motor yeah. by not rebuilding the motor yeah <laughs> just clean and, it up and charging bit. him for it yeah. so it but the nice. whole but the whole rest of the bike was real nice so he's like man i gotta get this thing sorted out right. yeah so that wasn't a problem and the other one was just kind of like your average chopped iron head sports shirt that was blown up but the kid was into it and you know and he didn't have a problem with it so there we go he was, he was probably doing 105 down some straightaway i hope so <laughs> dude so what's the uh what's the story with your dad's pan there what is that uh is that something that he was that that he wanted or you said fuck it i'm building this thing for you uh no he i mean he's got a uh what is it 74 flh okay uh and that's the bike he's had since i was real little and um then he bought a 03 road glide a couple years back and i basically ride the his electro glide when i'm between bikes so i have something to ride which is a pretty sweet deal all i gotta do is like fit you know change the oil and the tires and all that stuff and mm-hmm. you know do all the work on his bikes and then i got something to ride yeah. so that's cool so i th- I think he was uh up late you know crawling uh, strolling what do they say uh trolling craigslist <laughs> yep and he just found this motor real cheap and that was the beginning of it so went out to wasion got him a frame and a front end and Traded some parts to a friend of mine for the transmission and gave him that for his birthday. Nice. Man, Pop's getting a nice and, bike. Yeah, so it's not really uh, – there's no rush. There's no timeline on it. Yeah. But So I just built his front wheel the other night, and I'm like, all right, I had the back wheel done. I built the front wheel. I got to get oversized rollers for the hub. That's why there's no tire on it yet. Uh-huh. But So anyhow, I'm like, oh, let me uh, – I'll put the frame up on the table. Oh, let me hang the springer on it. Oh, wait, let me put the wheels on. And then, you know, two hours and six beers later, I'm yeah. like, hey, I got a bike. You yeah, got a fucking yeah. motorcycle. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I'm basically riding this thing. <laughs> 
So that's, yeah, I don't know. It's just something he kind of is like, oh, I want a panhead. I'm like, well, I guess I know a guy. Huh. Um, but yeah, it'll be cool. It'll be cool. Nice. And uh, so uh, my wife's in nursing school and she's doing a real good job. And it's, but it's real hard for us. So, you know, I can't, and we have a nine year old son. So when she started her actual program, uh, we moved into my folks' house to alleviate some of the financial burden. Yeah. Right. So I thought, hey, if I can build him a motorcycle at no, you know, no labor costs. Right. Then that would be a nice way to repay. Yeah. Exactly. You repay him for, you know, giving, putting a roof over our head. Dude, that's a deal, too, because, you know, Pops is going to do that for you anyway. Yeah, he, no he's kidding. not going to leave you yeah. out on the street. He's like, now I'm getting a panhead. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. I go, yeah. you know, you got to buy all the parts, and, you know, I'll get you whatever I can at dealer yeah. cost, but yep. you don't have to pay nothing for labor. And yeah, Pops going to we'll be rolling. Get it done. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Plus, it's badass that his son build him the bike. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm and saying? Then be like, yeah. My boy built this, or, right. or you know, I'll be watching him ride it. Like, fuck yeah, I built Damn that. Right. My dad's riding it. Yep. Well, Marcus, hey, where can we? Uh, where can everybody find you on uh, on Instagram? Uh, Instagram is Ghost Two. Yeah. What's O S T? What's the story behind that? Well, maybe I don't know. Thirteen years ago, um, well before motorcycles, it was all skateboard all the time. So I went to a place called Skatopia. Oh, nice. <laughs> in uh, Rutland, Ohio. And uh, I've been going there for quite a while. And this particular night, I was a little drunk. And I thought, well, if I can roll into the bowl, then I can skate it. And uh, I had no problem rolling in, but I got a little squirrely around one of the corners and just knocked my front tooth out uh. right there in the spot. Not even I broke straight across. Like, so that's it? So you just left that, it? No, I put it in my pocket and kept skating like a yeah. man. <laughs> Fix that later. Yeah, so, yeah, right. So I, I, I had a couple falsies made, yeah. and those broke. And after the second one, I was like, ah, oh, hell with it. Yeah, I'm done with it. Old Billy took a sick photo of you at the congregation. Oh, that was a trip, man. Yeah. That was so much fun. Yeah. But I was like, obviously hadn't slept in days and got <laughs> shit faced with those guys at the car right. party. What, um, what the hell? Iron Lords. That's yeah, the Iron yeah. Lords. Yeah, yeah. Real good group of guys. Oh yeah, there. definitely. Yep. Yeah, we had a real good time. So yeah, yeah. Nice. We got our mugs snapped at you know seven thirty or eight thirty in the morning. <laughs> That's why it was early. early. <laughs> Billy was <laughs> snapping yeah, was them. Cool. Yeah, Billy's a good guy. He yeah, had a, he, he came for the first fuel show and we had a good old time running around town. Nice. Yeah, he's a wild man. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so hey, go ahead and let them uh I re- interrupt you earlier. No, no, you're yeah, good. you're good. We're back. Go ahead. Uh Instagram is ghost tooth. Um T O O F. And now it's just, you know, like ghost face killer fixed and then but then I'll go to like New York or California or somewhere, and and I'll run into somebody that'll tell me like, oh, I wasn't sure that was you, and then I saw your tooth, and yeah, then, then I, knew I see, it was you. yeah, then I saw you smile, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, well, fuck, if I yeah. change it, you know, people could be like, that ain't him, uh, yeah, oh, that's not him. I don't yeah. talk to that guy, that's right? <laughs> so well, I might just have to stay. Yeah. Well, dude, we uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us for a little bit here. Hell yeah. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for the thanks for the contact and all that. It was nice meeting you, Scott. Oh yeah, definitely. Cool. Yep. Yeah, Marcus, I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you somewhere, man. Hopefully, uh, I get up to Ohio every once in a while. Visit uh, visit some boys. I have to come see the uh, come see the shop. Yep. Yeah, come through, check it out. It's no palace, but it, it does what I need it to do. That's, That's it, it, man. And I'm uh, I'm right right in downtown Cleveland, East Seventeenth and St. Clair. Nice. nice. I, uh, a friend of mine sent me a little link on the internet that was like the te- top 10 most dangerous places in Cleveland. And number one was like the, the corner that I'm on. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. That place oh, hey, ain't that bad down here. Hey, Just being up there, being up there at fuel at night, that place gets a little crazy down there. Yeah. A little crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where Alex is strange cycle. Now that I won't even go. By <laughs> no shit. Forget Jesus. that. All right, man. All right, I'll talk to you guys. I All appreciate right, it. Yeah, All man, right. for Later, sure. Bud. We'll see you, dude. Yep. Later. Later. Oh, God. Nice, dude. Freaking yep. on it. I like it. Yep.
What do you got? Jeff. We're Whoa. still recording. Shut that down. <laughs> <laughs>